Hi, my name is Aaron. And in this video, we're going to go through and demo an Android app written in Kotlin with Jetpack Compose that was converted from MongoDB Realm with Atlas SDK over to Couchbase Lite using Capella and App Services. If you're an Android developer, if you want to see this demo app and understand how it works, stick around. Let's get started. To start out with, to get this code, it's available on GitHub. And the URL is in this video description. Um, so if you want to go through, you can get that. But it's basically github.com slash Couchbase Labs. And if you go to Couchbase Labs and you're just browsing there, um, you can just search for CBL in the repository dash. And you should be able to find the um, Kotlin app right here. It's CBL dash realm dash template dash app dash Kotlin dash to do. This is based on the naming scheme that Kotlin or uh, the realm team had for the original app. When we look at the repo, you'll see here that I have a link to the original version of the application right here. So if you want, you can click on that and you know, open a new tab here and you'll see this is the original version of the app and you can compare this application to the converted application so you can kind of go through and see diffs of the changes if you like. Um, on top of that, we are going to go through and provide a pretty nice diagram that shows the application, explains the flow of the application, which is useful when you don't know a code base, right? You would like to see kind of from a high overview where it is so you know where to spend your time looking at the code, All right? So to get started with, you can pull the code down from cloning this repo. And I've already got the code cloned down um, to my local machine. Now, a part of this in this video series, in a previous video, I walked through how to get app services set up um, in Capella with a free trial account. You need to have that done. And that's part of that all set up in order for this to work. We need information from that, right? So either watch that video on the series on YouTube or from this repo, there is a capella.md file. And this walks through in text how to set up the entire process of this, right? And so if you go through and you walk through these directions, these should get you up and running um, the same as that YouTube video. However you wanna do that, make sure your capella is up and running, make sure you have your users created, your app endpoint, everything set. So um, with that, I already got the code, like I said, downloaded. So I'm gonna open up my Android Studio here um, and I'm gonna go through and open that code. So look here, I've got my developer um, here. I've clicked the open button to open a project. I'm gonna go to developer. I'm gonna find where I save the code, which is in my Couchbase folder. In my Couchbase folder, I got a realm folder. And in here, you'll see this is the Kotlin to-do application. Now with um, Android app-based applications, you always want to open it in the folder that has the Gradle files. You'll see here the root of this particular project has the Gradle files in it. So this is where I'd want to open this Android project from. So I'm going to go ahead and click open, and this will take a few seconds for Android to open this up. Now you'll notice that um, you may take a few seconds for, I've opened this code before, but if you're opening it for the first time, down here in the bottom, it's going to restore Gradle packages. When you store Gradle packages, those could take a few seconds. It's a pack a lunch moment could take somewhere between 30 seconds and I've seen it take sometimes 10 minutes to restore packages depending on how complicated the application is so take your time and understand that hey you know if you're doing this there's a chance that you know it could take a little bit for those Gradle packages to be updated now on top of that it's actually recommending to upgrade the Gradle version of uh, 852 for the sake of this you don't need to do that you can just um, go away from that uh, updating Gradle is out of the scope of this. And quite honestly, that's usually another pack your lunch moment. You can spend several minutes or several hours debugging like why sometimes it doesn't work during the migration. So for that, we're just going to stick to running the application. Now, what do you need to run the application? To start out with, um, you're gonna need a device, an emulator, right? So I happen to have one right here. I've got one created. And if you don't have one created, you'll need to go through and create one of those devices. Um, this is a emulator, right? And Or you can use a physical device, it's up to you, but you need to have this set up in your Android Studio. That's the first step, okay? So the next step is we need to go through and actually update the application's code to point to our app service. So I have in Chrome over here, opened up my app endpoint here. And this is the URL, I'm on the connection. Now, of course, if you follow the directions, you should know how to get here and it should tell you to do this already. But from this page, we need to copy this URL right here. So I'm gonna copy this, okay? And that URL I'm gonna put in my code. So I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna go find a file. So the folder you're looking for, so I'm gonna kind of uh, close all this so we can you can see it for uh, yourself. So in the Android here, I'm gonna go into the app and from the app, I'm gonna go into the resources folder and that's called RES. From resources, I'm gonna go into values. And from values, I'm gonna look at the capella config.xml file. And here you'll notice that we have a capella app endpoint URL. 
this is what we need to replace from what we took from the Capella website. So I can just take this entire value, um, delete it, and then paste in the value I took from the website. And that's it. We're gonna go through and click save, and that should be it. On top of it, I'm gonna, I've already have the app installed, but I'm gonna actually delete it so that um, we can um, go through and try it for the first time. Um, and it will not be on this device since you can see the real first time experience, just like if you were to do it, if you were to compile. So now that I've updated that config, that should be it. So I'm gonna go ahead and click the debug button here. I wanna make sure that I have my running devices running and I've got a phone up and running. And then I make sure that I have that device selected here in my uh, ability of devices I have uh, available to me. I'm gonna click the debug button. And this will take a few seconds as it does a build and it goes through and gets the app pushed to the phone. So I will pause and I'll meet you back here when that's done. And we're back. Look at that, it was very pretty quick. And we can see here the app's done. I'm gonna uh, minimize the uh, debug window so I can get this full screen. A couple tricks here. Um, to start out with, I like to automatically um, type in the username and password without having to type in. I'm gonna double click the word to do here and that will do it. Now, if your password is different, you'll have to put a different password in. You should know this because you created your user when you went through and set up your app endpoint. And I kind of told you in the previous video, you should set the passwords whatever you want. So, you know, if you change the password, it's not when it's in the directions, type in a password that may, that you typed in the app endpoint. If you don't type the password in correctly, for example, if I just type in blah, 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 blah here and hit login, you're gonna get an error that says, hey, that's an invalid username and password. That logically makes sense, right? So I'm gonna go through and make sure the right username is passed and typed in here, and I'm gonna click the login button. And out of the box, you got nothing. That There's nothing available because out of the box, there's just no tasks available. And that kind of logically makes sense. Uh, that's how the app was originally written. So we can add some tasks pretty quickly here. So I'm gonna click the plus sign here, and it's gonna ask me for a task name, and I'm gonna be a really original and call this task 100. And click create, and now we have a task inside the application. Inside the application, we can add more tasks. So let's go ahead and ask, uh, add uh, task 200, for example, and maybe we'll add task 300. So I got three new tasks, um, not very unique names here, right? Um, inside the app, you can go through and you can delete a task um, by clicking the ellipsis icons here. You can complete a task by going through and clicking a checkbox like that. You can show all tasks by clicking this little um, switch here or you can only show your own tasks. Now we have some other options up here. So one, if you wanna test like being offline, because this is the offline first database with Coach Base Lite, you can click this little icon right here and it turns off the networking and basically pauses sync so that you it won't replicate anymore. So you can make some changes, turn replication back on and then see those changes go into Coach Base Capella. And finally, we have a log out button. Now before we log out, let's play with this a little bit. So I'm gonna go back to my Google Chrome browser here and I'm gonna go into Capella and I'm gonna click the logo here so I can get back to the main home screen. From there, I'm gonna click the to-do cluster and I'm gonna click data tools. And we've been here before, if you've watched my previous videos, I'm gonna click the documents tab under data tools. I'm gonna make sure my bucket is set to to-do, the data is set to data and the collection set to tasks. And I'm gonna click get documents. You can see instantly here, I've got some documents. They already sunk, that's pretty amazing. So we can see here, here's my test 100, my test 200, my test 300. Now, one of the things is how do I get rid of these, this metadata documents? These are things that are keeping track of what's going on with sync and stuff. Well, one way you could do that is you can actually use the SQL where clause here to say where owner ID equals, and then the user that you logged in as demo one at example.com. And what this can do is filter out the documents. So you only see the documents that you basically created. And you can change this to demo two, for example, to test with the other user. And this just filters out it so it's easier to see. So let's play around with this a little bit and see if we can see sync in real time. So if we go back over to our Android studio, you'll see here, this task is set to complete. And we can actually go through and make our, uh, our browser here a little bit smaller so we can still see that app running. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change that back to be not complete. So how I can do that is I can click on the document ID here. And this is a text editor which means I can go in and just type in the word false under is completed and click save document. And look at that instantaneously the check mark went away. By the time it saved the document, that's how fast sync works. This is a cloud-based product running AWS right now, right? And this is my mobile app running here on my local Mac, um, running in my home office here. 
that's pretty cool. Let's try it again. Let's go to task 200 and mark that one as complete. So I'm gonna go through here. You'll see now when tasks are created out of the box until you click the checkbox, that field doesn't exist because this is a schema-less system, which is kind of cool, right? That means that, you know, if you wanna go through and update it, you don't have to worry about schema changes, which is really nice. Um, so I believe that field is called is complete ed, if I remember right. And I'm gonna say true on that. And that should get us to the point where it's there. I don't remember that field name. Let's go back and check that field name. Is complete. So it's not complete ed, it's just complete. So since that field's not there, let's just go add it. Um, is complete. Let's set this to true. I'm gonna go ahead and save that document. And we should see, there it is. The check mark automatically checked itself in the mobile app. I didn't click anything. If I wanna take that check mark back out, I can go through and click false. This seems pretty cool, right? Now with this, we can go through and we can copy and paste all kinds of crazy things. You can do all kinds of fun things uh, inside of here to test us out. But let's go through and make a uh, login as the second user and see if we can see these documents and show filtering off. So I'm gonna click the logo button right here in the mobile app. And this is gonna log out of the application and I'm gonna log into the app again, but as the demo two user, okay, instead of demo one. Now this is a totally separate user in the application. And you can see by default, we don't have any tasks. And you're like, well, wait a minute, Aaron, where'd all my tasks go? Well, remember by default, it shows only your tasks in the application, not everyone's tasks. To see everyone's tasks, you have to click this little tiny switch. And now we can see there's all tasks for all users regardless. Now, a couple of things about this. If I were to try to go through and click delete, you can't. You can't do that because you don't own that task and that's how the app works. The same thing with the checkbox is you can't click it because you are not allowed to modify somebody else's tasks. However, we can create a new task, right? And I can add a new item. I'm gonna say this is test uh, example two. And that's gonna say that this is my new example user. And if I were to take the filter out dynamically, you can see that happens, right, in real time. And I can say test three, uh, test example three. And I wanna show off a couple of things to, so you can understand just how cool this framework is and why um, Coachbase Lite is pretty neat. So if we look here, um, I'm going through and I have my test example two, my test example three here. And if I were to click this, now I have these other tasks that are available. These are switching queries in real time. Okay, I'm gonna make it so all the tasks show up and I wanna show this for a very specific reason. And it's about how the code is coded. If I were to change this now out to my query here to be exa demo example two, I can see the demo example two documents that were created. You can see here there's example two and three. If I wanna change example two here's document, right? So I'm gonna go into uh, demo example two here. I'm gonna actually be crazy about this. I'm gonna change the text of this to say example from Capella. I'm not gonna change this complete, but I'm gonna actually change the title of it, okay? And I'm gonna save that document. I want you to pay attention to what happens over here because this is important. Notice that the text changed, but the screen did not flash. And that's important because what happened was this is a live query. What happens is inside of the code that I converted, I wrote this in a way that basically makes it so that if you are changing items and the, and the items change, instead of changing all the items in the list, we only update the item that was changed. And this is something called a delta, right? And so in programming, when we think about this from a computer science standpoint, we know that we have data that's changed. And in live query, we get the entire set of data that shows you all this stuff. However, we want to calculate the deltas so that we don't have to refresh the entire list of, of application or tasks. You're asking, well, why would I want to do that? Well, in some applications, this could be a, maybe this is a dashboard application, right? Where these are a bunch of cards and inside there's a bunch of graphs that animate every single time the data changes. Well, you don't want to have to re-trigger every card to redraw and have the animations re refresh when really the only thing that changes, for example, the title. And so this is, comes down to user experience. When it comes down to it, you may need to or not need to calculate deltas and only update the items that change in the list. Live query, um, one of the features that are built into the um, Couchbase Lite SDK allows us, and it allows us with Kotlin flows, which is really kind of neat. So this is the application itself, right? We can go through and we can make changes. Now, another thing I wanna talk about here is we saw that change instantly, right? I'm gonna turn the network off for a second, okay? Now I'm gonna go back into Capella here and I'm gonna change that text to be something else. I'm gonna say that, that instead of saying Capella, I'm gonna say example, um, hello world, Android. Okay, I'm gonna make a new text field here for that. I'm gonna click save document. What we should see is right now, that 
we are saying in the past was instantaneous, that change. No longer instantaneous. Why? Because we turned off the network, right? So now that we turned off the network, we're not getting sync changes. And this is what happened if the user were to walk maybe into a, a they're like, a, like on a train, and maybe that train goes over a bridge. And so because of that, they lose their cell signal for a while. Elevators are really popular inside of buildings and, and cities. Um, I, as a mobile developer for years, I've had to fight the constant, hey, my I lost cell phone signal and I don't have Wi-Fi because I'm in an elevator. Um, sometimes you're in a building and there's no public Wi-Fi, right? There's many reasons why you may be offline. Now with this, the sync's not gonna happen until you go online, but I'm gonna click this button to go back online. Sync should come live and we should see this text hopefully change within a couple seconds. And there it was, it was almost instantaneous. The minute we did sync on, sync came back up. It went back up to Couchbase Capella and asked App Services, I have a current version of the data. What has changed since I've last been available? And it's gonna go through and tell you that, and it's gonna go through and make those changes in real time. So that's a demo of the application running. 